Yeah, get cold, put him out. Cold. Go to sleep. <laughs> you know, go to sleep. Mmm, make him not hang a lot. What's the set? Mm. <laughs> This is his opportunity to have what I call the Shaq effect, to where he could come to a team and he could make everyone better just by being on the floor and making one of the greatest scorers in the game, Carmelo Anthony, his shots easier and you can't double team him anymore. My biggest question mark is what position is he going to play? What's going on, y'all? Today we got crossover the Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson experiment short film. Let's get into it, man. A little short film, basketball short film, documentary, whatever you call it. Let's get into it. Flip him. My son said, nah, you buff That's Nate. That's Nate. <laughs> Nate with the shits. But y'all know what happened. Y'all know what happened recently. Nate was with the shits in the NBA game, ready to get a crap. Is that? But he got knocked off. Yeah, get cold, put him out. Cold, go to sleep. <laughs> you know, go to sleep. Mmm, make him not hang a lot. <laughs> What's the set? Mm. Nah, he definitely decked him. Following a massive Figure it around. 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 Figure it being suspended for 15 games. In just his fourth season in the NBA, Melo had taken a Nuggets franchise who had only won 17 games the year before he was drafted and helped make them a playoff team as a rookie. Strong move to the basket by Anthony. His ability to score from anywhere on the floor with a mid-range arsenal that it rivaled knows. anyone in the it game Anthony had become a nightmare for defenses and was now coming off his best pro season, averaging 26 points and five rebounds at just 21 years old. I never even watched Young Melo play, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, by the time I started watching Melo, he was already on the Knicks, you know. That's all I knew. I always, that's why I, was a, I used to be a fan of the Knicks. I still am, but. You know, I just don't be showing it loud and proud. Because we don't really got a big, great superstar like we used to. I ain't gonna lie. Melo used to be my guy. He used to be my guy. But now we got fake Jalen Brunson. And he's fake teeing up. But he's not really that superstar caliber player to really, you know what I'm saying, just be an attraction for the New York Knicks, man. But, I get it. <laughs> First time reacting to young Melo. Melo's a guy that's... Whew. Offensively, there's... You know, the game is so easy to this kid. Melo's got it. Five to shoot. Earl Watson to Melo! Ah! Oh! Bouncy Melo. Okay. Melo! Boykins looking for Melo. Carmelo's got it. Carmelo pull up shoots. What? You know those. You know those very well. Very Despite well. Carmelo's no early personal success, the Nuggets had found themselves stuck as a mediocre team in the Western Conference. Wait, and JR's Although they had a young star in Anthony. I remember the JR's fit that crazy dunk he had when he fake reached over something. You know what I'm that was crazy. That was a the crazy roster dunk. itself lacked a true second option to allow the team to compete in the playoffs, resulting in Denver being bounced in the first round every year of Carmelo's career thus far. Now as the team was in the heart of the regular season and was also being faced with the suspension of its franchise player, the front office was desperate to make a move that would finally make the Nuggets a true contender. You know, I sat back and watched LeBron in the first round and the second round. And I watched Dwayne Wade take the team to the <laughs> finals win of championship all three of my years. 
You know, I've lost in the first round. You know, I got three wins in three years in the playoffs, you know, which is, which is kind of embarrassing. 1,726 miles away, an entirely different situation was coming to head on the East Coast. Allen Iverson had become a household name in the early 2000s. Between leading the Philadelphia 76ers to the NBA Finals and being named the shortest MVP in league history, AI's embrace of hip-hop culture had resulted in him becoming an icon that extended far beyond the hardwood. Facts. And Allen's trying to bust the move on. Oh, yeah. Wow, he breaks his ankles and kills it, and they love it! However, Saddle outside of the individual yeah. success, the, the last man. two seasons had been filled with, with tension yeah, between lie, Iverson and the that. Sixers. Now at the age of 31, like Allen was looking for a fresh start and a chance to add the one thing he was missing for his career. I've had scoring titles. You know, I, I've had scoring titles. I had MVPs. I've been in playoff games. I've scored 50. I've scored 60. I've done those things. I ain't never won a ring. And that's the only thing, that's the only thing I want. And from where you're sitting, has Allen Iverson played his last game for the Philadelphia 76ers? Probably. Hey man, uh, for back. here to announce that uh, we've traded Allen Iverson and Ivan McFarlane to Denver for Andre Miller, uh, Joe Smith, and two first round picks. First, I'd like to thank Allen for the 11 years it's just when he found, um, got the no, I did speak with Alan uh, about an hour ago, clip. Um, and the guy's ecstatic. He's ecstatic to, to come here. That's why I wanted to go, just um, looking at that team. And have him okay, he wanted to go there. You know, Marcus. This is his opportunity to have what I call the Shaq effect, to where he could come to a team and he could make everyone better just by being on the floor and making one of the greatest scorers in the game, Carmelo Anthony, his shots easier, and you can't double team him anymore. My biggest question, Martin, is what positions he's gonna play? You know, when he first came, we sat, you know, without the media and all, we, we talked and he was telling me, it's your team, I can take the back seat. I've been the, the man on my team for 10 plus years, so now he, he, he said he's passing the torch to me. The whole yeah. talk was me coming in and playing with Melo. He has to understand that we have to make the team better. You know, I don't want to put all the pressure on him. I don't want him to put all the pressure on me. You know, in my heart, I'm a basketball player. And I know how to play basketball with the best of them. And I know how to adjust the situation. Mm -hmm. And if, 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 if Carmelo have to lead me to a ring, I'll be God right know on. how to adapt, man. In a move that shocked the NBA, the Nuggets now possessed one of the most exciting and unlikely duos the game had ever seen. At the time of the trade, Carmelo Anthony was leading the NBA in scoring with 31.5 points per game. And in second was Allen Iverson, who had been putting up his own numbers, also dropping 31 a night. Questions were immediately raised about how coach George Carl would manage the game's two most elite scorers on the same court. As the media and fans were left speculating, Iverson would soon after be on a private jet flying across the country to Denver. While Carmelo <laughs> served his back in the day it wouldn't up. take long for <laughs> Iverson to make himself at home in a Nuggets uniform exploding for 44 points and 10 assists in just his third game with the franchise. And here comes mm. Iverson. Iverson oh. all the way. Allen Iverson. Nice pass. Iverson sets it up for Clemson. Iverson showing his quickness. And here's Iverson. We're now trying to cut him off. You can't turn the ball over against Denver. 17 of 29 for the field, 44 points. As key members of the team began to return from their brawl suspensions, on January 22nd, 2007, Carmelo would make his highly anticipated return to the court, marking the official debut 
of what many thought could be the new most dominant duo in the NBA. Mm. They said the next Shaq and Kobe, they thought, said, well, Kenny Anderson said that. Ah. Wait, Kenny Anderson and Kenny, Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith, right? Kenny the Jets person? When I get Kenny Anderson, who's that? Mm. I think my favorite moment with AI was like, he came into the locker room and pretty much let everybody know. Like, if it's not me, and if it ain't him, I'm talking about Melo, then like literally give the ball up. <laughs> you heard what he said? <laughs> give him the ball. Clear out. After shooting to the lane, oh. Carmelo Anthony. Look at the Wolves, 20 points off the bench tonight. They have come from the hands of Antoine Walker. If three is good. Iverson to Anthony. Ah. There's a steal out front. Anthony gets it to Iverson. Chance to take the lead. They got it. Oh. Highlight reel stop. Iverson to Melo. While the team had lived up to the exciting expectations, finally catching a rhythm late in the season on their way to winning 10 of the last 11 games, it was clear that Carmelo and Iverson were still learning what it took to play with another elite scorer for the first time in their careers. These growing pains had been evident throughout the season, and the Nuggets would manage to finish at a mediocre sixth seed in the West. However, despite this inconsistency, there would be some hope in game one of the first round, as the talented San Antonio Spurs would learn firsthand just how dangerous the duo in Denver could be. Combining for 61 points, the Nuggets all-star teammates would become the first pair in NBA history to score at least 30 points each in their playoff debut together. Mm. The performance would result in Denver stealing game one on the road, but the playoff experience of the already established Spurs resulted in San Antonio winning four straight games to close out Sheesh. the series, sparking four their eventual tough. run to a third NBA championship <laughs> in five years. Now with a better idea of what to expect on the floor and having built up some chemistry from the year prior, the 2008 season was promising in Denver. The team would get off to a hot start, winning seven of their first 10 games, but there was a noticeable shift in balance of power on the court. Despite Iverson making it clear that the Nuggets were Carmelo Anthony's team, AI would take on a much larger role in the offense, leading the team in scoring with 26 points per game. Now with it for Denver, got fouled, and one! He realizes, okay, I got a guy Oh my god, the look away. But then he hears the whistle and he gets the ball up. The look away is ridiculous. 20,000 points in the career of Allen Oh, this is 20,000 points. Iverson reaches point. in, taps it away, there he goes. You're crazy. Rise Listen, up people, people don't, ah. and, and people don't <laughs> understand. People don't realize that. When he played with, when, he, when we played together in Denver, he was averaging 26. And he was averaging 26 that year. This is what he was doing. Iverson counted. Always Rocky going left, he's so, so, so dangerous. Gets the contact, jump Rocky stop, jump. elevate, Knock and finish. Iverson, one-on-one -on -one with Jack, five seconds. Iverson step back, foul line, got it. With one second left, point nine. Although there had been questions surrounding how Iverson had affected Carmelo's development, there seemed to be no signs of Anthony slowing down, as he would continue his own growth despite having taken fewer shots per game. In fact, after averaging 25 points on 49% shooting, Anthony was actually named as an all-star starter for the first time in his career, grabbing the second most votes in the West, trailing only Kobe Bryant. That's this tough. reflected not only on Melo's continued rise in popularity, but also showcased his continued rise into one of the game's top players. 
Carmelo. Oh, that's pretty. Ah. Take that! There goes Melo. Who's gonna stop him? Oh. Me up. Follow up. Oh. Out. God, no. Oh, don't let him have it. Anthony's got it. And that is a three that is away. Go on the bunker! Good for these fans. They want to have a game tie or something. The best night in the terrific five year NBA career of Carmelo Anthony. Together, Anthony and Iverson would both finish in the top five of scoring for the 2008 NBA season leading Denver to 50 wins for the first time in 20 years. Mm. However, despite the high number of wins, the Nuggets would fall victim to perhaps the most competitive Western Conference playoff race of all time. For the first time in NBA history, all eight of the playoff eligible teams would finish with above 50 wins, making Denver the highest winning eighth seed ever. This meant that Melo and AI were destined for a matchup with Kobe Bryant and the reloaded Lakers, a team who was hungry for a return to the top of the NBA. And Kobe got it away from Camby. Kobe on the run. And Camby. Trying to get him, he'll reverse it home with a slam! Los Angeles would put together a four game sweep of the Nuggets, winning by an average of double digits oh, each game. <laughs> For the second Woo. straight season, Denver would find themselves losing in the first round to the eventual Western Conference champs. As is the case anytime a team gets swept in the NBA playoffs, especially in the first round, it was clear that the Nuggets needed to rethink their direction as a franchise. While Iverson had led the team in scoring, he was now about to turn 33 years old, and it became evident that the younger Carmelo needed a true second option if the team wished to reach true contention. Mm. We're going to get to the big trade that transpired this afternoon. Just huge going on, folks, between the Denver Nuggets and the Detroit Pistons. Allen Iversons, one of the game's best scorers in history, is headed to Detroit. It, it happens like a snap of a finger. He gets traded to Detroit for Chauncey, right? So it's like I'm on a I'm on a fence now. I'm like emotionally, I'm like, damn, hey, this is this is my brother. Like this is my guy. Yeah. Y'all just trade him off like that? Who are we getting, first of all? <laughs> we better be getting some pieces. And they were just like, oh, you know, we, Chauncey. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay, now I, I see it, but nah, y'all can't do AI like that. In return, Detroit sent the Nuggets former NBA champion Chauncey Billups, a player who would fill the true point guard role needed for Denver to make it out of the first round. Mm. The Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson experiment in Denver didn't last long. It was a desperate attempt from a franchise to create an elite duo from two of the greatest scorers the game had ever seen. A formula that may have looked good on paper, but just never fully developed on the court. It's funny because I feel like we had a like that was probably the core of like just a, a bunch of great dudes. We had that. It's just that we didn't have uh, zero. We had zero guidance. Like our, we were literally like misfits out there. Like we we had all the talent. We had you know, scoring, defense, athleticism, speed. We had it all. It's just zero guidance for us. Sheesh. In the end, it was obvious that Denver <laughs> had the pieces needed for a contender. In fact, with Chauncey Billups running the point and Carmelo returning to his role as a primary scorer, the Nuggets would even reach the Western Conference Finals the following season, something they had never done in franchise history. Sometimes that run in itself completely overshadows the two years that Iverson wore sky blue and yellow. But to forget this small two-year window of time, a time where a prime Allen Iverson shared the floor with a young Carmelo Anthony means to forget a unique period of time where the beginning 
and end of two Hall of Fame careers intersected. 2008 would be the last time Allen Iverson would ever average more than 20 points in an NBA season. Following his time in Denver, he played for three teams in the next three years, eventually stepping away from the game altogether. Meanwhile, Anthony would continue his rise as one of the most skilled players in league history, playing for another 14 years and finishing as a top 10 scorer in NBA history, before officially retiring in 2023. No, Melo and AI didn't win anything together, but what they did do was cross paths at a perfect time where fans across the NBA could witness two of the game's all-time greats at the height of their careers. Icons from different generations, putting on a show every single night. That's the end of this one, y'all. Tough, tough crossover. Camilla Anthony and Allen Iverson experiment. Damn, I didn't know it was he only played that little time and only only had that little time in Denver. I thought he had played a little longer in Denver and Detroit. I guess he played a total of like three, four years in, in on those two teams. I'm talking about Allen Iverson. How how long did Carmelo play for um the Nuggets? Cause I don't need I don't need I don't need, I found out about Carmelo when he came to the Knicks, man. I don't die a lot of y'all. When he came to the Knicks, I'm like, oh, that, he wild. <laughs> he wild. <laughs> That's a youngin'. For real, man. But if y'all enjoyed this reaction, I know what to do. Click on the last reaction over there. Um, turn on post notifications. Share the video. Comment and subscribe. And I'm out of here, man.